coping with betrayal trauma comes about by blocking your awareness of betrayal. Betrayal is a complicated topic and every time I've had to do any kind of conference, speech, keynote speech, you know, talking engagement, the topic of betrayal, trauma, deception comes up. It's like, it's a topic that a lot of people want to understand. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information on it. Have you ever been in a relationship where you've been betrayed? What about being betrayed by your family? You may find yourself struggling all the time with trusting other people and you may wonder why. There's a such thing known as betrayal trauma that really highlights the traumatic process that you have most likely gone through after being betrayed. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about betrayal trauma. It's called post-betrayal trauma to be exact. And I'm gonna highlight some of the ways that you may be feeling as a result. Before we jump in, let me just briefly introduce myself in case you're new to my channel. My name is Tamara. I'm internationally and I'm board certified in trauma therapy. I'm licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma right in my private practice. Let's jump in. Coping with betrayal comes about by blocking your awareness of the betrayal. There's a reason why I keep saying that, why I said it at the beginning of the video, why I'm saying it now. And that's because for a lot of us, deception is hard to accept, right? We don't, you know, come into this world believing that it's okay to deceive and that it's okay to deal with a person who deceives us. I, I think most innocent babies and, and infants come into the world trusting, right? They need to rely on other people and that's typically their parents, their grandparents to help them survive. So we are kind of born, right? In a state of trusting. Deception is way over our head. We're not used to that. We don't expect it, especially if it comes from a family member or a close relationship. I'm, I'm gonna post my live chat right up here. Go ahead and check this video out at the end of this video uh, where I talk about the topic of deception, but there tends to be three forms of deception. One is instrumental, meaning that the deception is used for a specific purpose. There's an intent. There's also identity deception where, you know, you kind of cloak yourself, hoping that nobody finds out who you really are. Um, and then there is also, what's that other part of deception? Identity, instrumental. Oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> what is that? What is that other kind of deception? So, you know, there are there are two most important forms of deception that you need to be aware of. Um, go ahead and check out my live chat after this video and you'll get the other kinds of, uh, you know, forms of deception that there is. But there's two I want you to be aware of in this video. One is instrumental deception, meaning that the individual intends to do something. And the other one is identity deception, meaning that they kind of cloak themselves, right? They put out this facade um, and they really try to make you believe them and, and think that they're one way that they're not, right? Right? deceivers after you have experienced being you know deceived and being betrayed it's really hard for you to climb back up on the horse and keep riding right you may find yourself feeling really depressed and overwhelmed you also may not be able to understand um, how intense the trauma is that you have experienced there's a there's a lot of different ways the heart and the mind processes deception and so that's why there's a concept of post betrayal trauma and or syndrome I should say as well I've also heard it called uh, trauma and the idea behind this term is to identify the emotional and psychological process that you go through you know after you've been betrayed the kind of betrayals that you may have experienced really makes you more vulnerable to experiencing post betrayal syndrome and that is childhood trauma so childhood maltreatment uh, sexual abuse, childhood abuse, and relational abuse, you know? And in those, those forms of abuse in childhood, there's often instrumental deception and identity deception. You know, someone who wants to, um, you know, betray you and deceive you um, as a child may groom you, right? Buy you all kinds of things, give you all these wonderful things so that you will grow to trust them. So they then down the line believe that they can they can deceive you and, and they can cloak you, uh, cloak, cloak themselves and then put a, a, a cloak over your eyes. Um, unfortunately, this is how it goes. Children are sometimes groomed groomed, meaning 
predators who are adults will do wonderful things for the child because they hope to get something in return. And that's typically how child sexual abuse comes about, right? Or sometimes, um, you know, predators, that's how they, that's how they act, right? Predators who are attracted to children. So these, these kind of, uh, these kind of acts makes you more vulnerable to post-betrayal syndrome. Now, let's say, for example, you have a mother who's a psychopath or you have a father who's a narcissist. They've done various things to you over the course of your development. You're now an adult and you're still being betrayed by your parents, right? That has built up over the years and it probably has stacked on top of all the other things that you've experienced in your life that feels like deception or betrayal or just pure pain right and that can make you most vulnerable to also experiencing post betrayal syndrome post betrayal syndrome really is this internalized um inability to to trust um you kind of isolate and withdraw you hide you may also have a difficult time loving outsiders and locking hands with them in togetherness because you're afraid of being hurt there's you know there's almost like this um, post-traumatic stress response uh built into the idea of post betrayal syndrome you may actually have a hard time connecting with people so there's avoidance you may have a hard time with memories and flashbacks of being betrayed and deceived in your past and that can interfere with your now time your your right now moment right you may also hold back marriage and having children or hold back creating a friendship over there with your neighbor because you've been betrayed and deceived for so long and so much right so it's almost like a post-traumatic stress response when you've experienced post-betrayal syndrome. Now, post-betrayal syndrome kind of, you know, muddies the waters in your life in a variety of areas, right? Because, because what happens is you develop this, this mistrust of society, the institutions that are supposed to protect you, the school system, the FBI, the IRA, right? You also grow kind of suspicious of the government, uh, you know, trusting anything that they may be offering or anything that they may be doing. Um, and you also may have a hard time trusting family and other relationships. So it's almost like this complete breakdown in trust of people and society. And usually, I'm gonna post my video right up here. Here's the thumbnail so you can come back and check it out later. Usually when you are experiencing post-betrayal syndrome, you are likely to experience, you know, the fear that you are being gang stalked, gang stalked. Um, and again, that's because you feel betrayed by the institutions that are supposed to be on your side and by the government as well. You can have a high level and you can also have a low level of post-betrayal syndrome. The high level of post-betrayal syndrome is the most difficult to, to, to manage, cope with, deal with. And that's because your defenses are so high and you're so afraid of trusting. So you may be wondering, what happens to me, right? I have post-betrayal syndrome symptoms, behaviors, mindsets. What is this, right? So here's what's likely to happen to you. You're probably gonna have a disruption in the process of trusting. You're going to have a disruption in the process of trusting. You're not gonna to wanna to trust anybody because right now your defenses are up. You don't trust them. You're also going to have an impaired ability to detect possible trustworthiness, right? So a trustworthy person might be standing right in front of you. They may be there wanting to love you and to care for you. Maybe it's a family member. You may have a really hard time trusting them, but you are pushing away a good thing. So there's an impaired ability to, to um, detect a person's trustworthiness, right? And it's almost like you're punishing yourself because you're so afraid. You're also likely to experience this impaired ability to, to, to make decisions, relational decisions, right? Because you're so afraid. Post-betrayal syndrome um, almost has you in a state where you're almost feeling like you're being attacked by the world and by relationships. And so it's almost like this fighting stance, like, no, I'm not going to trust you. Who are you? What do you want? Right? You're almost in this fight or flight mode all the time. And so there's an impaired ability to make decisions because of that, right? You're always in this mindset of fight or flight. There's also a, a higher chance of 
of experiencing traumatic bonding. There's a higher chance of experiencing traumatic traumatic bonding. When you feel betrayed or deceived in your life, you know, you may cling on to those relationships that are familiar, but you're clinging on to unhealthy relationships. You're clinging on to relationships that are not going to end up anywhere but down. Post-betrayal syndrome also alters the way that you see others. It alters the way that you see life and it alters the way that you engage in life, right? So that's another issue that you're likely to experience. And, you know, you may also have this experience of, of what we call betrayal blindness, betrayal blindness. And it, it, it's kind of like, you know, I can't really see that I'm being betrayed in this relationship because it feels comfortable to me. I'm safe here. Even though this person has done things to me, I feel safe here because it's familiar. Well, perhaps in that familiar relationship, you're being betrayed in that, in that moment, right? Or in that relationship and you don't even know it yet. So you almost experience a, a, a betrayal blindness. You don't see it coming, right? It kind of sideswipes you or throws you off when they turn on you, you know? These are different things that you're likely to experience. Check out these videos right here on gang stalking that I recently did. And I'm also gonna post my live chat uh, on deception. We're gonna talk more about this, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for being with me in today's video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.